Morning guys, <laughs> Dr. Ken Nordberg, haven't seen you for a while. The other day, I was digging in my freezer and uh, where I keep all my venison, and I came up with uh, one of four different items in there, and I thought, gee, I haven't cooked one of these things for a long, long time. So I got it out and cooked it up, and oh, it was so good. I, I've just almost forgotten how good something like that can be. Now, it's kind of surprised. This is a treat you can make in deer camp very easily with a little bit of skinning and maybe, you know, cutting a little bit of bone. This is something you can do in deer camp. And everybody who has any of this will think, my gosh, is that good. How come we never had that before? <laughs> and I'm almost, almost ashamed I haven't introduced it before because it's that kind of a treat. Now, how many of you have ever eaten lamb shanks? Now, oh, raise your hand. Oh, quite a few of you. Well, more than likely, anybody that's ever eaten a lamb shank done properly, like at a Greek restaurant, uh, you've eaten a lot of lamb shanks. <laughs> they are so good. Well, believe it or not, a buck shank, <laughs> or doe shank, a yearling shank, is as good, or almost as good, maybe just a tish, but it's up there. It's up one of the finest pieces of venison you can eat your life if it's cooked properly. And it's so easy to cook. It's so easy to cook that you can do it in deer camp with, on a stove top. You're going to use a process called braising to cook it. And so I thought, gee, you know, I had to, I had to introduce this recipe on, on YouTube. So that's what we're doing. And so uh, in a few minutes, we'll get up to the oven upstairs and start putting this together. And it's simple, except there's a list of spices and ingredients, and uh, when you're watching this video, you might want to keep a, a piece of paper handy and write these things down. Now, I hardly ever measure anything. You know, I've been a cook all my life. I've uh, been the main cook in my house all my life, and my sons are the same way. And you get to the point where, I no, you don't need this. Measure everything when you cook up something that comes out good every time. So that's this kind of a recipe. I like my lamb chops made in a, in a Greek restaurant. Yeah, I've had lamb chops and, and uh, lamb shanks and different restaurants, but I love the Greek version. The problem with that is, in my favorite restaurant, I can't get the, <laughs> the, you know, the list of ingredients and how much each should be used. That's kind of an old family secret that goes back probably 100 years. So I've had to make do with what I thought were in those greens. In fact, every time I have one of a lamb shank, I, I look at all the little pieces that are in the juice that it was braised in, and say, what is that? What is that? And it looks like this, and it looks like that. So I know some of them, I, I know some of the ingredients, and I know some of them are really important. There's things like oregano and onions and, <laughs> and diced tomato and, and calamari are olives. <laughs> Those are essential in that, in that liquid that you use to braise a buck shank or doe shank. <laughs> it's pretty simple otherwise. So let's get busy and put this together. Here's a buck shank. Here's some diced onion, diced carrot, diced calamari olives. Here's some diced tomato finely diced tomatoes. Other things here are the spices. I got Spanish paprika, celery salt, uh, thyme, allspice, fennel seed, oregano, lemon pepper, rosemary, and garlic powder. The basic liquid in this is beef broth and we have some pepper and salt. And my Dutch oven is this roaster here. This roaster belonged to my mother. She got it when she was married. This thing is about six years older than I am. <laughs> it's been around a long time. But it has a family tradition that anything cooked in this is always delicious. <laughs> so it's a wonderful pot to use. And you can see this thing has had a lot of use in the last, well, over 90 years. <laughs> okay guys, the uh, first thing we're going to put in this Dutch oven is about an inch of beef broth. 
cover about an inch of the bottom with beef broth. I think that'll do enough right there. Now, when you brace them, you're not boiling it. You know, it doesn't, you don't want to cover the whole thing with water. But you need enough liquid so that when it's uh, in the oven or on the stove top, that liquid is producing steam. And most of the work of cooking that, that shank is going to be done by steam with a lot of flavor in it. Okay, so the liquid is the base for all that. Well, we're going to put some tomatoes, uh, diced tomatoes, finely diced tomatoes go in there. And a little bit of tomato flavor is important to a shank. And, and calamari olives, uh, that adds a real Greek f flavor to this thing. And some onions, I don't think we'll use all those onions. See, I just add maybe a third of a cup of, of tomatoes and a third of a cup of diced onions. And believe it or not, this is one thing I've always found at this Greek restaurant, is some diced carrots. <laughs> Finally diced carrots. And that provides a sweet flavor. You know, carrot carrots, when they, they're cooked, get to be sweet. Well, I'll stir this a little bit. Next, we'll get busy and start adding spices. Now, like I said, the Greeks like a lot of spices in their food, and so do I. And, uh, <laughs> okay, the first thing I'll be putting in there is probably about half a teaspoon of paprika. There, that's about a half teaspoon. Next thing, we'll put in some oregano. Oh, about another, maybe half teaspoon or a little bit more. About like that. That'll do it. Now some lemon pepper. Now the lemon is kind of a important ingredient in Greek food. They have they use a lot of lemon in their foods. And my favorite Greek potatoes have a good strong lemon flavor. We don't want this to be powerfully lemon and we need the pepper. So I'd say about a teaspoon of that. That'll do it. Another one that I, I'm sure is part of a good recipe for uh, lamb shanks is rosemary leaves. So we'll put about a half teaspoon of that in there. There. Well, we got to have garlic, that's for sure. So rather than fresh garlic, I'm using garlic powder and probably about a half teaspoon of that. Okay, now here's some more ingredients. Now, celery salt. I'm not sure that's a regular ingredient, but I added some to the, la the last recipe I did, and it tasted good. I like that. In this case, I used a quarter teaspoon of that particular spice. Next, I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of thyme. You don't want to be too generous with it, because that's a strong flavored spice, and it can take over. But you need a little of that flavor in the recipe. Here's another I like, personally. It's powdered allspice. <laughs> Us Scandinavians, we like allspice in a lot of our food, but I'm just putting a quarter teaspoon of that in there. Here's another. This is fennel seeds. Probably if you're going to really do a job with fennel seeds, you should grind it up in a, with a mortar and pestle to start with, but I'm not going to do that. We'll just add an old quarter, maybe a little bit more of fennel seeds. And I love the flavor of that on pork and on venison. Then we got to have pepper. So we'll add some fresh ground pepper to this thing. Not a lot. This is one food I don't want to add too much heat to it. Some things I love a lot of heat in it, like a lot of Mexican foods, but not a shank. And of course, got to have some salt. And uh, oh. After this is cooking for a while, I'll check the flavor of this, this liquid. Well, there. That's it. I'll stir that a little bit. Now, first thing we're going to do is put this on the stove top and bring this liquid to a boil, just to get all these spices mixed up into it quickly. Well, the sauce is boiling really good right now. We don't have to have it boiling for a long time before we add the meat because after all it's going to be in the oven for up to four hours. 
But this is a good way to get started. Get the proper flavors going into that shank. There we go. This is really going to change in shape. <laughs> we wait and see. It's kind of amazing what happens when it's cooking. A spoon of all this on top. But after about an hour or so, we'll flip it over. And might flip it a couple of times before it's done. There. Beautiful. Oh, put the cover on. And you like a nice tight fitting cover because you want that steam to stay in there. There we go. And now that's going to go into the oven set at 325. And we won't look at it again for at least an hour. Okay, that's what it looks like after an hour. Look at that. It's starting to look <laughs> like a lamb shank. Only bigger. Look at how that <laughs> bowl, they all retract from. Now this meat is still tough here. It's going to take two or three hours yet for that to, that to get real t soft and easy and chewy and juicy and falling apart. <laughs> Good. Doesn't need salt. Yeah, it's a little ways to go, but look at it, it's getting tender here. Yeah, that is so tasty. It sure smells good. Yeah, oh, I should flip it over again. That's really tasty. That is beautiful. That is a gorgeous buckshank. And it's going to be delicious. <laughs> sure smells good. Give it, give it a try, John. See what you think. All right. Oh, is that tender? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's just falling isn't that, apart. Isn't that amazing? That the toughest thing ever was. And look at how tender it is. Oh. Been. Oh, isn't, man. Isn't that great? <laughs> that, that is so soft. Look at that. It's just falling apart. See what a valuable piece of meat that is, one of those buck shanks. <laughs> mm. So that was at three and a half hours we took it out. Yeah. And that was more than enough. That's the beauty. The flavor is great. I could picture doing it with wine too. You yeah. You could put a red wine in there. Oh. Good, yeah. That could have been done. Isn't that good? I, uh, for me, I would add just a slight amount of salt. It, it, to my taste, it needs a little just salt. Just right for me. But all the spices, that, that combination is great. But isn't that something? Yeah, that's just really tender. I can't believe how much it's falling apart. That yeah, was the it's toughest. Falling apart, juicy. Yeah, toughest. Tough as meat in the deer and look at them. Yeah. Wow. That is so good. That is great. Well, it's all yours. Thank you. All right. Well, great. Thank you. Another great recipe. Yep. That's a super recipe. Way to go. And it can be done on stove top. You know, it has to be low, though. You don't want to burn it. Yeah. But it can be done on a stove top in deer camp. Yeah. All right, cool. And that's something? Yeah. One more thing. That 10th edition of my White Tail Iron Almanac is loaded with good things to know. Now, if you don't have it yet, <laughs> uh, you just got to get it. And I want to thank you guys that have already been ordering it. And it, it just makes me feel good to know so many guys are taking advantage of learning what I have to teach them. And I, I thank you for all the orders and all the nice letters I've been getting from people who have got the book earlier and started to learn how much better whitetail honey can be and buck on it by learning what they've learned in this book. Get that book soon, you guys. Don't miss getting that one for yourself for future years. As a favor to me, you know, as a seminar speaker on YouTube, please 
subscribe, hit that. It doesn't cost you anything, and, and, but you'll, it'll tell you every time I come up with a new se seminar, it's on and you want to see it. And also, hit that thumbs up button uh, that says you enjoyed what you read today. That's important to me as a seminar speaker. So with that, uh, thanks again, guys, and I'll see you again soon. Be sure to visit my website. Here's the link. Here you'll find links to my blog posts, my Twitter account, my YouTube account, my Amazon store with links to my eBooks, my son's eBay store, a money saver if you're ordering from Canada or other countries, my website bookstore, and much more.